Welcome back to the channel guys. In this video, we are going to finish up the Setmiel build. So let's get to it. Okay, so probably next, I wanna get this receiver welded up. So we did have quite a heaping seam on this, um, on the original, you can see, so. I don't know if I want to do that or make it clean, but we'll figure it out. I had the wrong button on the uh, camera there, but we did it. Not great, not terrible. Factory welds weren't either. I don't know if I'm going to grind this down or leave it like this, because this is how the factory welds looked, except a little finer, but haven't decided yet. We'll figure it out. Okay, so next part here is to weld up the back of the magwell. So I got my rear piece held in place with the mag release lever and pin and everything, and then the takedown pin for the front. So with that, I got the mag uh, loose enough where I can pull it out. So it's not like super tight in here, um, but it's not super loose either, so it's not gonna flop all over the place. So uh, we just have to run a bead right down through here and right down through here. All right, here we go. One side. Probably go like that here. It's not ideal. It's a little better, actually. Weld it in now. Probably should do a couple smaller beads up there, maybe. I don't know, I'll have to look at some pictures to see how far up that's welded. But yeah, for now, that comes in, that goes out, locks up nice. Perfect. Yeah, these guys really make this thing easy. This flat was completely painless, honestly. I didn't have to do much of any tweaking. So. That's awesome. Good stuff. Yeah, one thing to note, the magazines. You see it is an AR mag. Um, they only run on GI style mags. I think they call it like a Stanag mag or something like that, but won't work on P mags, won't work on any of the, the polymer mags. Has to be the GI, like OK Industries type magazine. Um, Got another one here. That one's a little tighter. Still locked up. Yeah, they're not drop free by any means, but yeah, if we need to modify you know, the inside here, 
Um, I can expand out the magwell a little bit, but you know, that locks up nice and tight. Awesome. So one more thing we have to weld on for this mag piece here is a little plug weld there, a little plug weld there, and the same thing as that on the other side. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that done. Okay. I got enough here. I gotta start planning my welds out better. Like these long stitch welds here. You gotta make sure your hand can cover every inch of the weld that you wanna do. Cause when you have to readjust your hand or you run into stuff like the clamp, um, it's gonna make the weld look like garbage. So I gotta start being better about that. All right, here we go. One side, do this little pinhole here. And we'll flip it over and do the other one. First time on video that I've actually swore. Uh, tungsten shorted out and hit the receiver right there. Well, it looks good. I did that accidentally though. There's that. Good stuff. I think we can now get the rear block welded in too. Okay, so pretty simple here. All I gotta do is Weld these seams on. That should be about it. Okay, pretty simple task here. All I gotta do is weld these seams up. And this flat back block is in. Um, I ground it down too, so I'll probably hit it with the sander too after we're done.
I don't honestly know what the best procedure is for leveling the front sight in relation to the trunnion, uh, but I'm going to do it how I do AKs, where I've got two metal rods. So one's balanced on the flat spot on the trunnion here, the other's balanced on the flat spot on the front sight. And if we look straight down, you can very clearly see that the front sight is kind of tipped this way, just a touch. So I'm going to tweak the front sight so these bars are level and start started into the journal up here. So I don't know how deep it has to go, uh, but I'm going to get to get it started so I can at least push it in straight. Okay, I've got my front sight in, and I'm trying to guesstimate for the cocking tube spacing. So I have this 15 thou plus my bolt gap, which is 31 thou spacer in there. And I've got just a little bit of wiggle in there. So with that, that'll get me you know, an estimate on how much gap I'll here, have here, because we don't want this tight against the front. So. With that in mind, that's going to be perfectly set. It's still level with my back uh, trunnion here. Um, I think we're ready to start inserting this into the uh, receiver there. So looking at how this goes together, um, it looks like I should actually be spacing the front sight based off of this piece here, because that pin has to align. Um, there can be you know, about whatever that is, a little less than an eighth of wiggle room of the front sight back and forth. But here, that's got to be just about perfect. So looks like I have to go out just a touch more on the front sight to get this thing to line up. Um, otherwise, yeah, you have to be egging the hole out in this and it really doesn't do anything if it's tight against that. So um, I'll go ahead and bang that front sight off just a touch more. I got a piece of aluminum. Just hit it here with a piece of aluminum and whack it with a couple blows of the hammer. So should be pretty simple. Yeah, that was pretty quick. So got the pin in, nice and loose. Trunnion seated all the way back. That's where my front sight needs to be uh, in this direction. So I'll probably have to clock it a little bit to get it flat again, but that's really where it should be because the trunnion should be all the way against those back holes there. Well, before I get any further with the trunnion, seeing I had some bad sight alignment with the C build, I want to get the rear sight tacked in place. Uh, so I do have it basically where it needs to be. It's got a little button right here. Um, got it on the receiver pretty flat. I think it's basically flat with the top. Um, the top didn't end up being very round when it was uh, formed in the uh, bending die, but it's good enough to go here, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and just tack this back of this sight in place um, just to keep it in place so we can use the sights to align the trunnion when we are uh, welding that in place. That metal is very strange. It's probably because it's cast, is my guess. Did not like that very much. I've done the uh, rear sight there. I got it tacked in place, not fully welded. And I've done my due diligence getting this thing sighted in. Um, did everything I could. I tied a string between the two sights, made sure everything's level. That little flat spot on my trunnion is level, as is the flat on there. And the bore sighting is right about where I was with the Set Me C once it was um, actually shooting well. Uh, my front sight is, you can't see it, but it is centered vertically. So half up, half down, still have all the travel left. 
My rear sight is centered horizontally. Still have all the travel there as well. So I think I should be good with getting this thing zeroed in. So I'm gonna go ahead and weld this trunnion in place. There's one. There's two, wasn't the best angle. So that should hold it in place. Yep. Go ahead and get the rest of these welded in. I'll be right back. I know it doesn't look like much, but I got the cocking tube in place here. Um, I got just stuff shoved in everywhere to hold it in place. Uh, whatever, I'm tired. Um, it's level. So I got the front leveled in. The cocking tube pushed all the way back against the shim, which remember is 15 thou over my bolt gap. So 17 thou plus 15 thou. Um, so I got that shim in place. Everything's pushed back. This isn't pushed back. So I think we are ready to tack this in place here. Um, not like the set me C where you got the tube that goes inside more. This is all just butt welded together all the way around the tube. So. We'll go ahead and do that now. Probably just tack it in place, see how it works, make sure everything slides good, and then we'll do the full seam. Okay, I'm gonna try not to move anything here because it is where it needs to be. There's some tacks. Okay, so take two. I was having an issue where the cocking tube, so I took everything out after I tacked it, and the cocking slug just kept getting jammed up about out here. Um, so I took the slug all the way out and just tried running the slug in, and the receiver was too tight on the sides here. So what I ended up doing was turning a piece of aluminum, which is this one down here under all my other crap, and just pounding that through to expand out the side. So now the cocking slug can go through all the way without a, uh, an obstruction there. So let's go ahead and uh, tack this up again. Again, we're just gonna do the corners just to see if it will cycle. And of course we do that. That's the most frustrating part about TIG for me is dipping the tungsten. You get too close when I got low current like that. But we got it. We'll regrind it. 
Okay. We'll take all the stuff out, see if it works. Well, see if it'll cycle the bolt like this. All right, take my shim off. The bolt all the way in. Locked in place. A little bit of play there. Unlocks. Everything works good. Good stuff. So now I'll seam weld all the way around. I haven't figured out really a good way to do this. So I really can't get you know, a backer in there. Um, so I think we'll just have to keep the heat down and weld the seam all the way around. Works nice and smooth. Let's do the sides. Okay, got it all welded up there. Welded it in pretty good. I'll probably not even grind that down. The originals won't. Or originals weren't. That cycle's nice. Good deal. All right. Last thing I want to do here is weld these seams back up carefully. So this is cast. It's acting really strange. I'm hoping I can get it clean. I don't know if I can. I've never welded cast before, but we'll see how it goes. First one looks good. Dip the tungsten just a little bit, so I'll go ahead and regrind. And next one now. Okay, so I'm doing one pass with filler, one pass without, just so I can clean it up. So the one pass without filler is to just smooth everything out. And that's looking pretty freaking awesome. Let's go for the other side. side good stuff while that is cooling off the elbows welt really hot let's transfer this trigger pack over so you can't use the original trigger pack because of the way Marco Mar did their denials and it's pretty awesome actually um, there's no way that you can install this is the full auto trip right here so chuck that 
And then where that goes, they send a little bushing, which is in the side of the trigger, right there. Easier said than done, right? Okay. But yeah, that goes in the side of the trigger there. And then, you just transfer everything back over to the new one. So, pretty simple stuff. Um, this spring I hear is a bugger back here. So, let's see how that works. It's not. Because this spring needs to come out somehow. Hmm, okay. Let me figure this spring out here, because it needs to come out, hit there, and on the back of the trigger. Well, that was pretty easy, honestly. So, the hardest part was this spring, as I thought, and all I did was took a little screwdriver and kind of pried it up around the side, and out the bottom, slid the whole thing in, pins just go back in where they were. Um, yeah, that's really it. There's little spring plungers in the front there. I thought that was pretty interesting. So that's what pushes this back up. And that's it. New trigger group, back together. Naughty bits, not in it. A couple final steps here. One, pin the front sight now that I know it's um, pretty much on. Um, I rechecked it on the wall, bore-sided string, everything, and it did not move, so that is where it should be. Um, so I used the original pin that came in my kit, drilled out to a 532nd, so um, it was quite tight. Didn't have to press it in, but it was darn close. So the bolt, same thing here. I took off the full auto catch. Nothing groundbreaking there. Um, that back in, assemble it. That's really it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing all together so we can see how it looks. One thing before we assemble, don't be an idiot like me. This hole should be sized like this. Um, when I was putting my trigger group in the first time, I was like, what the hell, this isn't lining up. Something's not right because I can't I can't possibly get this in there with this fully seated and the, like, it doesn't work. So what I didn't realize is that this little groove actually seats in the metal here. So what you do, you put your trigger group in, shift it back, get that safety in all the way, and then shift it forward and that locks the safety in place. Um, uh, yeah, you can see I said, oh, hey, look, they messed something up with this receiver. Uh, I took the good old Dremel to it and uh, made the hole a little bigger. Should not have done that. It was fine as is. So literally the only thing I had to do for this receiver is drill the button out, the hole for this button um, out like one size bigger, just this side. That's literally, all I had to do with this receiver. It was, it was awesome. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing together so we can see how it looks. There it is, looks good. Can't really see my safety screw up there, so that's good. All these welds, really pleased with, except for that one. But yeah, this thing looks nice. All right. So I'm actually going to replace the old stock set here with a brand new production from Mark Lamar. I broke down and bought that. It was like 125 bucks. So I'm not going to do the battle worn look anymore. Um, I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it, but yeah, so I got a brand new stock set. Once I get this thing parked, get the green painted again, We'll put the new stock set on and uh, should be awesome looking. 
let's flip it over. Not much to see over here. Yeah, some discoloration from the welds. Again, I don't know what this paint is, but it smells awful when it burns. There's that side. Take a look at the top. Pretty happy with that. Yeah. All right, let's wrap this one up. Thanks for sticking with me for the Set Me L build. Um, here it is all done, obviously. And I'm real happy with the way this thing turned out. Um, next step, we'll be going to the range. We have to test fire, make sure everything's good. If it's not, we gotta do some hacking and whacking with this, just like the Set Me C, hopefully not. Um, I think I learned my lesson. I did a pretty good job getting these sights aligned. I think we should be all right. Um, but yeah, real happy with the way this thing turned out. These welds look awesome. Just this thing is nice. Um, can't wait to get the new stock set on. Can't wait to get this thing reparked and repainted. It should look brand spanking new. So um, stick with me for next time. We'll be going to the range to test fire this. And then after that, we will be reparking this and painting it. So thanks for watching guys.